Can modern turbo engines last the long time the non-turbo engines lasted? Folks, this is probably the number one asked question today in the automotive industry among owners, car owners. All new cars, almost all of them are turbo and all that stuff. Here's the simple answer to that. Yes and no. And the real in-depth answer is it depends. And let's start with the video. I'm going to talk about what it depends on. Folks, turbocharged engines are nothing new. We're not just entering into turbocharged gasoline engines. Did you know that the first turbocharged production car was actually a 1962 Oldsmobile Jetfire? Horrible idea, by the way. But it's nothing new. And if you switch over to the diesel side, they've been using turbos for a very long time, very successfully. But here's the important part that you realize. Let's go into the next section and talk about what is the difference between diesel and gasoline because they're not the same when it comes to turbocharging. Not at all. So most folks will assume that your diesel turbo engine and your gasoline turbo engines are the same. Well, that we've been using turbos and diesels for a long time. Same thing with gasoline. We drive millions of miles on that big rig and everything is fine. That's not, that's actually very incorrect, folks, because even though they might look the same, operate in the same way, they're not the same, folks. Let's talk about them. Turbos in diesel engines, they help the engine breathe better. They do create boost, but diesel engines, by their nature, they struggle sometimes to pull air in. That's just how they're designed. So turbos help with that. And the other thing with, with diesel engines, Diesel is not as combustible as gasoline, so it doesn't burn at a much higher temperature like gasoline does. It's always a lower temperature. Not super low, but lower. That's the first thing. The second thing is diesel engines don't rev very high, and their turbos usually operate at low boost. And generally, diesel engines and commercial vehicles, they're designed to be driven at a cruise at a steady speed for long and long miles. They don't generate heat, as much heat. They're not continuously spooling super fast and coming down. They don't have a throttle body that closes all of a sudden and then all that pressure just, they don't have that. They're meant to be driven, not stop, go, stop, go traffic when they need to spool up, spool up, up, down, up, down. They're meant to be cruising. That's, that's the whole point. Gasoline engines, on the other hand, they generate a lot of heat compared to diesel, their turbos will spool very fast, very quickly, because they're usually smaller turbos, not as big as the big rigs, for example. And the other thing is you have a throttle body. The minute you let go of the gas, shuts, even though there's a bypass, whatnot, it'll still jar that turbo. So it's under a lot more stress. And the last thing is, Typical gasoline and turbo engines are driven normally, daily driving, city, stop, go, accelerate, fast acceleration, stop, fast acceleration, stop. So they're always spooling up, spooling down, spooling up, spooling down. They're com completely different than diesel. Even though they look the same, they sound the same, the operating principle is the same, but they're not exactly the same. So you can't really, the statement of, well, turbo engines will be reliable because look at diesels, they, they're fine, so we're gonna be fine too. That is an incorrect statement, folks. So why are you seeing a lot of turbocharged engines now? Almost all of them are turbocharged. And why are manufacturers all of a sudden switching to turbo gasoline engines? Here's, here's the, let's, let's go a little bit back. Turbos in the past used to be dedicated to performance cars. You know, you got this big engine, you put a couple turbochargers on it, now you got a lot more power out of it. Usually cars like that, reliability, not high on the list. Because if you go a little bit more, race engines are not meant to last 100,000 miles, let alone 1,000 miles. They're maybe meant to last one race, maybe two, pushing it. Emissions are the number one reason that all of a sudden we find ourselves going back to turbos for day-to-day -day cars. Here is the very basic explanation of that. Tailpipe emissions. If the engine is not running, 
we have zero tailpipe emissions. If the engine is a large, big V8, V12, V16, whatever the case may be, it's going to create a lot of tailpipe emissions. The smaller the engine, the less cylinders it has, the less tailpipe emissions it will generate. That's kind of a general rule of thumb. But here's the problem. Okay, we want to create less emissions. Let's put a very small engine and we're good, right? Well, what if it's that's a big SUV that is heavy that's used to having a V6 or a V8? How do we do that? Aha! Uh -huh. We have best of both worlds. We have a small engine that produces the least amount of emissions. We pair that with a turbo that can push this engine to make power of a much bigger engine. And then we have the best of both worlds. That's the basic idea of where, why you see a lot of V6s being dropped, a lot of V8s being dropped and replaced with, with smaller engines, with turbos, because that's the only way to meet the emission requirements that the government is requiring. There's no other way around it. You can't make this big behemoth of a truck or SUV drive normally with a tiny little engine unless you push it to make power of a much bigger engine. And that's what turbochargers are basically doing. So will modern turbo engines be more reliable or equally reliable to non-turbo engines? Folks, straight, God honest answer, no. That's, that's not the case. Truth has to be said. But the real question is, how much less reliable are they? That depends on two factors. The first one is the design of the engine, the design of the turbo, the quality of the engine, the engineering behind it, the quality of this turbo, and how the whole system is kind of designed, protected, fail-safes and whatnot. But that could be said the same thing about non-turbo non engines. I mean, if it's a bad engine to begin with, no matter what you do to it, it's just bad design, bad parts, horrible, cheap quality. That's the same can be said about turbo engines. However, the next one is the more important one. Say we have a good engine to begin with. Say we have a good turbo to begin with and a, and a good quality one and good engineering behind it. The second part is that's going to determine the reliability of that and how much less reliable is it is you the owner because there is nothing that destroys turbos than the owner of the car that's and having said that let's go into the next section and explain how that is so how do you make your turbo engine last long and not add to it not being reliable Folks, turbo engines, gasoline turbo engines, they run much hotter than non-turbo engines. They're under a lot more stress. They're strained, usually to their limit. Oil, engine oil, is the number one cause and the number one victim of turbo engines or turbo engine failures or turbo failures. Modern turbo engines, they have a tiny little turbo. They don't have a big one because they need that fast spool up. The bigger the turbo, the slower it'll spool. Spool meaning spinning. Smaller the turbo, spool very quick. Here's a problem. When it's a small turbo and we're demanding it to generate this much high, high pressure, it's going to spool so fast. And the faster it spins, the higher heat it generates and the more it just cooks that oil. I mean, turbo engines destroy the oil. That's, that's the reality, folks. Oil is, uh, is the life of this engine. We take it for granted, but that's the life of this engine and equally the life of this turbo. And this turbo is not kind to this oil, folks. That's all I'm going to tell you. They spool so high, they create so much heat. It just breaks down that oil very quickly. That's problem number one, when you don't change that oil. But here's the problem where we take it off a few back to the manufacturers. We are getting more and more turbo engines with smaller, smaller turbos that generate so much heat. And then we have a race of longer and longer oil change intervals. And some will stop right here and say, wow, oil technology have changed significantly. Well, let me tell you in an old school mechanics way, nothing have changed. Because we have the same problem we had in the 90s with performance cars. You don't take care of that oil. This turbo will not last, the engine will not last, and you're going to have all kinds of problems very soon. As simple as that. Folks, if you own a modern gasoline turbo engine, please, 
take that 10,000, 15,000, I mean, we've seen manufacturers, 20,000, which is like, yeah. Take that, keep it for the books, and instead do three to 4,000 mile oil changes back to, back to the olden days of 3,000 mile oil changes. If you want to see this engine get impressive mileage without issues, that's, that's a guy honest truth, folks. No oil technology, no advancement in this and that, just old school mechanical things. Turbos destroy engine oil. You change it more often, keep it as clean as possible, you're not gonna have issues. That's the only downside. And some folks will complain, well, I don't have the time for 3,000 mile oil changes. I don't have the time. Mechanics are trying to take advantage of me. Why are you telling me this? Folks, then you're not gonna have a reliable turbo car. Just go buy a non-turbo car, although they're becoming less and less. That's a God honest truth. There is no other weather way for me to say it. Change your oil every three, 4,000 miles, and that part where we said it was less reliable will be a few thousand miles, nothing more. But keep the current trend of longer and longer oil change intervals, and you're gonna be shocked how less, how less reliable it is. I mean, you'd be lucky to get to 100,000 without issues at this pace. I hope not, but unfortunately, that's a reality. Folks, please, you wanna monitor turbo cars? Look, I wish we don't have them. But we, I am also a re, uh, realist. This is the world we live in. We got turbo engines. That's fine. But we, what are we going to do about it? We got to make sure our cars last. Cars are not cheap these days. Take care of them, folks. Change the oil a lot. I mean, if you want to do it earlier, you're not going to hurt nothing but do good. That's how it is with turbo engines, folks. You got to change that oil. You can't go these 10, 15, 20,000 mile intervals that the manufacturers are saying, because you know what? Even though they're the people that designed the car, I think a completely different department that didn't look what happens beyond the warranty decided on these 10 and 15 and 20,000 mile intervals. Not the engineers that decided, because if you, if you find one powertrain engineer that will tell you, oh yeah, you can go 15,000 miles, keep this car for two, 300,000 miles, they need their license pulled and they need to change careers, flat out. You will not ask a single powertrain engineer or engine engineer who will tell you, yeah, that's perfectly fine. No, it's not. Perfectly fine for who? For the warranty period or you as a consumer keeping the car for a long time? That's something you need to consider, folks. Please, I own turbo cars, old and very new, modern. Change that oil, 3,000 miles. Start planning on changing it, 3,500, 3,700, it's gone. Use quality oil, that's another one. Don't use cheap oil with turbos. Don't start changing weights of oil. Oh, I'm gonna put this thicker oil because it's better. Don't do that with modern oils and turbos. Remember, they need to have a specific pressure going to them, and some of them will have a restrictor. You put thicker oil, this throws that out of the window. Stick with the recommended oil weight. Change that oil as frequently as you can. You're not gonna have a problem. The next question that's gonna come up is, why don't you just stay with the old engine? Folks, reality is we're gonna keep driving old 20-year-old cars. That's the problem. We're gonna have at some point to move on and buy newer cars, and these are how the newer cars are. The only problem I see is, I'm just gonna small uh, news flash prediction, if you would. 10 years from now, when we go buy a five to 10-year-old car that's turbo, it's gonna be real tough finding one that is in good shape because folks are going with 10 and 15 and 20,000 mile oil change intervals. It's going to be tough. So I hope this video just reaches out to folks that are driving these cars new today for them to have a long lasting car and then for other folks 10, 15 years from now to find a decent used car to buy because it's going to be bad if we keep going with these habits, folks. You can make a turbo engine last if it's a good engine to begin with, but you got to maintain it, please. Uh, this is from the heart to heart maintain these cars more because they really need that for reliability. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.